Welcome back to Vesco Falls for another episode of Behind the Curtain with me, Ranger Nick. Today we're going to be talking about some of the most important parts of camp that you may or may not see, but it's certainly vital to the entire operation up here during the summer and year round. That is our water system and our septic system. So I'm going to take you through, sh show you how we get all the water for camp, how we store it, how we keep it safe, and then also how our whole septic system works throughout the camp. So here we are at the center point of the whole water system. This is the well pit that you guys might recognize right across from the dining hall. Uh, during the summer we have you guys meet here. During the winter it's the one point where you can get water from for any of the campsites. Uh, it was originally dug in 1956. Dug down 344 feet down deep into the bedrock. And this is where all the water pumps for all of Big Springs camp. Um, recently we had some volunteers come up over the past couple years. Redid all the wiring. Brought it out of the pit because it stays very, very uh, humid down there, which isn't good for all the electronics. But uh, here and here, we'll see uh, obviously all the electrical and the electrical panel, the starter for the actual well pump, um, and all these relays and switches up here, which are what help call for the water from the well pump that's deep down in the ground. Uh, we do have two systems here, obviously a winter system and a, and a summer system. As you can see by the switch there and with that um, it switches off on how we call for water in the winter it calls from a pressure switch uh, within the well pit here because we only store 240 gallons of water here over the winter because it only supports the one frost free spigot on the outside bear lodge and unami lodge but over the summer we switch it over uh, to sensors up in our reservoir uh, up on the hillside uh, that stores 30,000 gallons of water and from that uh, there's sensors up there float a float switch so that way if it gets down to a certain level it'll trigger the well pump to pump water up into that uh, 30,000 gallon reservoir so next I'm going to take you down into the well pit uh, show you some of the stuff down there and here we are down in the well pit uh, you can tell it's a pit you can probably hear the echo pretty good uh, right here, right in the center of the camera, that's where all the water initially comes in from deep down in the ground, uh, from the well pump, then passes through a check valve, and then the small tube you see coming into the line there, that's the chlorination line, so all the water here is treated with chlorine. Um, we have it calculated out to be between one and two parts per million to make sure the water is free of any bacteria or anything else. Now this is where it switches off. See, one small pipe goes down. And that's what feeds the water for the entire winter. And you see the valve right there in the center, and how that pokes out the wall? That's what feeds up to our 30,000 gallon reservoir through that three inch uh, steel line up onto the hillside. So as that feeds around, you see the chlorine pump, uh, similar to the one that you saw me uh, talk about at the pool. Very similar type of pump, works the same way. They're just calibrated different to put in different amounts of chlorine. Chlorine comes out of this container. And over here we have two 120 pound pressure tanks. So with these pressure tanks, there's the pressure switch that I mentioned while I was up top that called for the well pump to pump water during the winter, which will then pump into these pressure tanks. And the, these pressure tanks have rubber bladders inside that have actually had an air pocket with them and they're set at a certain PSI so that way the water will be pressurized as it's pumped in and as water is used in Bear Lodge and Ami Lodge the bladder that's filled with air will force that water back out at a constant pressure so that way the well pump isn't running the whole time the well pump will run for a certain amount of time and then shut off that way then the water can be used so, so it'll start at 60 psi drop down to 40 once it hits 40 it'll engage the well pump to start pumping water to bring it back up to that 60 psi level within these tanks so this is very much a pressure-based system over the winter only because it doesn't really supply that many different areas. So ne next following this, I will take you up to show how the water in the summer works up in the reservoir. So here we are up on top of Pine Mountain. Uh, this is our reservoir. You can just see a little bit of the concrete poking out in a few spots. Some drain vents here. 
Uh, but this is where our 30,000 gallons of water is stored over the summer. Uh, it's way up on the hill, so that way this is a gravity system. So that way the gravity will force the water into the water system of camp. Uh, camp is run through a six inch main water line that runs throughout the entire camp. Uh, but it all feeds right from here at the reservoir over the summer. So coming up, you won't be able to see it, but there's a three inch line that comes into the reservoir and pumps the water in. The water will pump into here and, and fill this with 30,000 gallons. Uh, there you see hanging on the tube there, that is that float switch that I talked about. Uh, once it is in the position like it is now down, it sends a signal back to the well pit telling it that it needs more water so it'll pump. And once that float floats up, it'll then tell the well that there's enough water in there. So that's how that works. Uh, so throughout the camp, there's a combination of six inch water lines, uh, four inch water lines, three inch water lines, two inch, uh, you know, all the way down to one inch lines throughout camp. A lot of them are steel, old steel lines. Uh, we're often right now we're using uh, the polypropylene, uh, the black well pipe for our water lines. But as you can see how far straight downhill this goes into main camp, this is what feeds that gravity into that line. You might have seen at different parts throughout the main road of camp, you'll see that large six inch line. Um, a lot of the two inch line and everything you won't really see, uh, but it is just, just above the surface because over the su summer, because it's only a summer water system, we don't have to worry about it freezing. So when it was originally installed, they did not make it that deep. Um, as opposed to our winter water system, which a lot of those lines are three or four or maybe even deeper feet underground to keep them from freezing in the winter. So that is how our water system works in camp. Everything over the summer comes from all the way up here and it, it can it keeps pressure up upwards of uh, 100 psi even as far as great bend so that is how this entire water system works uh, next we're going to move into how some of the septic works in camp so here we are down at the pool to uh, continue the discussion today about the water and septic systems um, note on the water systems we only have three three wells that provide water for all the campers in camp so there's one in the Big Springs area, which provides everything for the whole summer camp area. We have one over at Bushkill in the family cabins, and then one all the way out at Firestone. Now, it's a little bit easier to get water in places because it's under pressure. But uh, when it comes to septic, it's all re relying on gravity. So we're going to go through the two separate septic systems that we have here in camp. So here we are in between the pool and Unami Lodge. Uh, you might have noticed these manhole covers. Uh, as you've gone through this field. Um, important note on any of the manhole covers uh, in camp, they do normally uh, have something to do with the water or septic system. It's very important not to drive over them, not to walk over them, uh, or, and don't lift them up uh, just for various health hazards and safety hazards. Uh, I should really be the only one ever lifting them up. So, these four manhole covers, these are the septic system for Bear Lodge, the staff area, and Unami. Uh, the way they work, all the waste coming from the toilets, the showers, the sinks, and everything go into these tanks. Each one is a thousand gallons. So all, all this waste water and waste solids will come out of these cabins and enter the first tank here. And each tank in succession kind of settles out those uh, solids and semi-solid waste uh, to the point where by the end it's basically just water. Uh, water, other liquids, uh, totally totally safe to be in the ground and as it works its way through all the tanks uh, the solids settle out, the so some solids rise, um, by the end it's all liquid and the way uh, this older system works is it basically breaks off and the liquid then is gravity fed out into what are called uh, the fingers of the septic system. So a lot of septic systems have, you know, four or five uh, and e even more of these fingers, which are basically perforated pipes that 
this waste liquid will go through and then leach back into the ground. Still perfectly safe. Um, a, lot, a lot of them are in gravel beds, so that way the that water can just seep right into the ground and get rid of it. So this is one of the older systems, uh, basically original to the property. So as we'll move around, we'll move around to one of our newer systems, which was originally installed in 2006, along with when we installed our new pool and pool shower house. Uh, for the most part, it always just took care of the pool house. But as you saw in the last episode of Behind the Curtain, uh, we do have our new shower house here. So we did pipe that into this uh, newer septic system also. Yeah, we got some turkeys on the parade field here. Um, so basically at the beginning, it all works about the same. You might've seen these manhole covers here on the parade field. Uh, ultimate manhole covers. Uh, these are each 2000 gallon tanks for the septic system at the pool in the pool shower house. So it works the same exact way. All the waste from the showers and the toilets head into the first tank. The solids either settle down, some float, and then as everything pushes through, it's all liquids. So all these liquids will work their way through and then end up in a, uh, again, using gravity, piping down around sports, back through the basketball court, uh, down through the old uh, campfire area, and over towards the Resco Rangers and Scoutcraft area. Over there, you might have noticed uh, two large mounds. These aren't just hills, they're actually sand mounds, which mounds that have sand and other gravel in them. And how this system works is it pumps through uh, the, the septic line all the way down, and then there's another tank down there. And within that tank, there's actually pumps. So it'll take any of this wastewater and once the tank fills up to a certain level, it'll pump that wastewater out into those sand mounds. And just the same way as a leach field, it'll force that liquid out into the ground. And this is just more of a newer system that pumps it into those sand mounds instead of just relying on it leaching into the ground out of those pipes. So the, the only other method of septic that we have in the property are the pit latrines within the campsites. Uh, most of them are two to 4,000 gallon tanks and they don't leach anything. They literally hold all solids and liquids in them until they're ready to be pumped. For the most part, they're pumped once a summer for a lot of the campsites. Just that's pretty much how long it takes for them to uh, get filled up. Some of them, such in, in some of the larger sites like Cayuga and, and any of the lower seas, they'll, uh, they might get pumped every two to three weeks over the summer. So they're a little bit more heavily used. But this is, has been our uh, water and septic for Resca Falls. Hopefully you've learned something. Hopefully you've enjoyed this and hope to see you again soon.